uh, is Farzad Amata Kanlu from Cosmotel Incorporated and also graduate advisor at the University of California in Irvine. And he's gonna be talking to us about consciousness cosmology. And as a reminder, please try to use the microphone. When I was in the back, it was a little hard to hear the speaker and we do also have people online. Good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure to present T Consciousness Cosmology, a theory by Muhammad Ali Tahiri, who is the founder of uh, Cosmo Intel uh, Research Center for T Consciousness Fields Studies. I'm going to talk about the story of universe and then motivation of this presentation, a brief uh, overview of Big Bang Theory, you all know what Big Bang Theory is. Then T-consciousness cosmology, the differences between big shock that comes from T-consciousness cosmology and the Big Bang, and at the end, the theory of everything. So cosmology is where science, philosophy, theology, and religion meet. Each discipline has its own description for cosmology. In some aspects agree, in some aspects they completely disagree. Uh, considering cross-disciplinary ideas, when uh, you are thinking about new theories, it's going to provide some uh, broader perspective when you are considering different disciplines or uh, philosophy. As an example, the Big Bang was originated, the idea of Big Bang was originated by a priest and a scientist. So seeing the big picture is going to provide big ideas. When we have different people from different disciplines, we may find some solutions to some of the mysteries of the universe that currently we don't have any answer. What is the goal of this presentation? To rethink and reevaluate our theories. You all know about the Big Bang Theory. This is one of the dominant cosmological models uh, that we have. Although uh, most of the scientists, uh, cosmologists, they agree on Big Bang Theory, there are so many unanswered questions. And there are some main issues with the Big Bang. The flatness problem, the horizon problem, and the magnetic monopole problem. These are some of the main problems with the Big Bang Theory. There are some add-on theories to the Big Bang. They provide some answers and solutions to some of these issues. However, they create other questions and other problems. Here are some of the examples of unanswered questions. What happened before the Big Bang? What caused the Big Bang? Where did the initial matter and radiation come from? What happened in Planck era? What was the mechanism for galactic formation? What are dark matter and dark energy? Where are they? Why we are living in a fine-tuned universe? There are so many constants. How come all of these constants are what we have? 
this fine-tuned universe? How come? The problem with the time and entropy, which I will explain later. Sometimes we have contradiction between some of the theories. For example, general relativity and quantum field theory. Uh, when we go inside uh, the black holes, they contradict each other. And so many other questions that we cannot answer with Big Bang and other theories. When we ask these questions from astrophysicists and cosmologists, here are some of the example uh, responses we receive. We don't know. It was just an accident. Big Bang Theory is not about the first few pages of the book. We don't know what are the first few pages of the book. We are reading after the first few pages of the book. However, when we ask them, okay, what's at the end of the book you are reading? They say, we don't know. <laughs> they don't know the beginning of the book. They don't know the end of the book. And then they talk about the parallel universe, multiverse, and so many other responses that doesn't make sense. Let's look at the universe from another point of view. T-consciousness cosmology. So this theory, T-consciousness cosmology, was developed by Muhammad Ali Tahari in the 1980s. What is T-consciousness? So for the, from the two presenters, before me, we heard about different levels of consciousness. We heard about the observer point of view, that uh, the reference point of view, observer point of view. When we talk about T consciousness, it's the highest level of consciousness we are talking about. It's the fundamental consciousness. It's neither matter nor energy. Uh, it's not originated by human being. That's why we call it T consciousness to differentiate it from other levels of consciousness. So from T consciousness point of view, here is the story of the universe. The universe started as a cosmic black hole. It is a different black hole that we know. It is a cosmic black hole with unique features. In this cosmic black hole, there are absolute materials which are known to science at this point. So how we got this universe from this cosmic black hole with absolute matter that we call it TAM? If I want to explain that, first I want to talk about an analogy, a spring. When you compress the spring, then it has its maximum stress. When you release it, then the stress is released. The beginning point of the cosmos, that cosmic black hole is analogous to the initial state of the stress, stressed spring. Then based on the cosmic rebound, analogous to what happens to spring, it goes to the final state, which is the relaxed state. So it started the beginning point of the cosmos is started with a cosmic black hole. Then based on the process that we call it big shock, I will explain it later, the rebound started. Right now we are in the rebound stage of the universe. It gets to a point that is the terminal edge of the cosmos. We call it absolute darkness. At that point, there will be no matter or energy. It will be consciousness, <laughs> which I will explain. Then it will reverse back to the next cosmic black hole. 
we are 13.8 billion years from the last cosmic black hole. And we don't know when we are going to get to the next cosmic black hole. This uh, absolute matter, TAM, that was the initiation of the universe and the cosmos. When the rebound started, because of the disintegration of TAM, we have this uh, whole universe as a ball expanding. However, Again, from T consciousness point of view, we have a shell which consists of the TAM material. This TAM has dark, dark matter. This dark, dark matter is disintegrated in different phases of dark matter. And at the end, we have dark energy. So the science is aware of dark energy. That release of space mesh is going to come from the dark energy. As the universe rebounds and expands, we have the release of space mesh. Then from light dark matter, we have different stages of waves from super compressed to non-compressed. And then we have the fundament fundamental energy and particles and antiparticles. At the end, we have the nuclei of early atoms like hydrogen and helium. And based on that, this is the way the universe is expanding. Again, is, it is started as a cosmic black hole in the past 13.8 billion years. It is going to the terminal edge of the cosmos, similar to the complete release of a spring. Outside this, motion is not defined. Space is not defined. Gravity, time, entropy, they are not defined. Inside, all of these are defined. And right now, we are somewhere in the middle. So the base of this universe is motion. That is the base of this universe. That is why we have this cosmos. We have independent variables, space and waves. From these independent variables, we get dependent variables, which are gravity and time. From uh, T consciousness point of view, gravity and time are vectors. And the relationship between the time as we know to the time based on T consciousness is the reciprocal of the norm of the time based on T consciousness. So, let me talk about a couple of other definitions. The temperature. At this point, the scientists believe the temperature in the cosmos is 2.7 Kelvin. From T consciousness point of view, that 2.7 Kelvin depends on the location from the cosmic shell. So as the universe is expanding, that cosmic shell is actually going to the rebound process. And depending on the distance from the cosmic shell, the temperature is changing. That is one factor. Depending on the distance from the cosmic shell, the temperature is changing. The other factor is the expansion of the universe itself. As the universe is expanding at 2.7 Kelvin, is decreasing. So as the universe is expanding, the temperature that we are going to measure for the universe is going to go down to absolute zero. And that is when we have no matter, no energy. When we have light pa passing through 
different materials, different transparent materials, the wavelength and the speed of light changes. This is the way, this is the same way as the cosmos is expanding. So as the cosmos is expanding, because the viscosity of the cosmos is changing, the wavelength is changing, the speed of the waves are changing, the frequency is changing, the temperature is changing. So all of these are changing as the universe is expanding. So all the constants that we think are constants, they are not constants, <laughs> they are variables. Uh, the entropy, temperature, viscosity, and uh, gravitational constant. We are at a point that we, we are measuring these constants and we think they are constant, but they are changing as the cosmos is expanding. So let me compare very quickly the big shock versus the big bang. Uh, so for big bang, Initial condition at time is equal to zero is unknown. In big shock, it is known. We know the initial conditions. In big bang, there is no explosion. In big shock, there were two explosions to that black hole. It's interesting that there is no hard evidence before 10 to the minus 13 and still the scientists say there is no explosion. How do you know there was no explosion when you say we don't know what happened before 10 to the minus 13? That is a big question. Uh, the other thing is, based on Big Bang, the scientists believe there were low entropy and low disorder. And as cosmos is expanding, the entropy is increasing. However, <laughs> the big question is, how with that low entropy, the Big Bang happened and the inflation happened afterward. However, in Big Shot, we had the maximum entropy at the beginning, and now it is going back to low entropy. It is similar to a spring that is going back to the unstressed uh, status. In uh, Big Bang, we have expansion due to dark matter. That's the same case in Big Shot, however, the in disintegration of the TAM for the cosmic shell, that is causing another level of expansion that is acting similar to solid fuel in a rocket. In Big Bang, the scientists believe inflation happened in a very tiny fraction of time, the universe expanded from the size of nucleus to grapefruit, however, there is no expansion based on big shock because first the cosmic shell, the TAM does not let the universe to expand and did not let that. The other thing is we had maximum gravity at that point. How come with that maximum gravity inflation get, that uh, can happen? Um, the fabric of universe based on uh, big bang is a space and time and we get uh, gravity out of that based on big shock. The motion is the base of this universe. We have independent variables, space and waves and dependent variables are gravity and time. Based on big bang, there is no boundary and edge to the universe. Based on big shock, we have the cosmic shell. That is a huge difference between these two theories. Uh, my background is in engineering. Let me give you an example. When you do finite element analysis and computational fluid dynamics, when you don't know the initial conditions and you don't know the boundary conditions, your simulation results are not going to make any sense. That is what happened with the, with the simulation that has been done to the cosmology. The initial condition is not known. The boundary condition is not known. However, the initial condition and boundary conditions are known in uh, Big Shot. The CMB based on Big Bang happened uh, 380,000 years after the Big Bang. In Big Shot, this is continuously happening. The temperature the, uh, difference, 2.7 everywhere. However, it is not constant in the cosmos based on Big Shot. The constants are constant based on Big Bang. 
uh, based on Big Shot, they are not constant. We receive new images from Hubble. Uh, there are some questions <laughs> why we have these uh, images from early universe. We have the answers in Big Shock. The James Webb uh, Space Telescope, what they are going to see, they think they are going to see 380 years, uh, 380,000 years after the Big Bang. However, based on the Big Shock, we are looking at 13.8 uh, billion years after the Big Bang with the delay that is coming back to us. So uh, before the Big uh, Shock, before the Big Bang, uh, based on Big Bang, we don't know uh, what happened. Based on Big Shock, we, we know the answer. The moment of the Big Bang is not known. The moment of Big Shock is known. Uh, the initial and boundary conditions in Big Bang are not known. In Big Shock, they are known. Uh, the prediction of the future uh, based on Big Bang is unknown. For Big Shock, it is known. Uh, the fine-tuned universe, there is no answer for that for Big Shock. For Big Bang, we have the answer. And why this universe exists? There is no answer for Big Bang. We have the answer in Big Shock. In Big Bang, the first few pages of the book is unknown. The last chapter is unknown. How we got that book here is unknown. Why we are reading this book is unknown. <laughs> in Big Shock, we have the answer to all of those questions. And uh, I'm going to finish very, very shortly. Based on Big Bang, we have matter, energy, dark matter, and dark energy. Based on Big Shock, of course, we have matter, energy, dark matter, and dark energy. However, we have one element, the highest level of consciousness, T consciousness. Based on Big Bang, we have conservation of matter and energy. Based on Big Shock, we have the conservation of information. That is the difference. <laughs> so from the previous from the previous cosmic black hole to the next cosmic black hole, it is the information that is going to trans to get transferred. And there is going to be a difference. The difference is we as human being are adding to that information before it gets to the next uh, cosmic black hole. So uh, T consciousness, the, the main element of the universe, and uh, uh, we can see the T-consciousness everywhere. Uh, today, I talked about the larger scale. On Friday, my colleague is going to talk about the smaller scale. So please uh, make sure to please join uh, that session and as well on Friday. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. We have time for a couple quick questions. How does, how does your model account for the accelerated rate of expansion? And also, um, how would it account for Hawking points if they're confirmed in the CMB? So for the acceleration, there are two reasons for the acceleration. Let me bring the slide here. So there are two reasons for the acceleration. First, the thickness of the cos uh, cosmic shell, it is decreasing. That TAM material is converted to dark matter, dark energy, and the matter and energy. So the thickness is decreasing. As the thickness is decreasing, the expansion accelerates. So we have that Hubble, co uh, Hubble constant H0. We have that here in this model as well. The, the, the other reason is the disintegration of the TAM the material uh, of that uh, shell that helps that acceleration. So, so because of two reasons, we have that acceleration and we have that H0 for Hubble constant uh, here. You may be wondering about the thickness of <laughs> that shell. So at the beginning, what, what was the thickness of all of those uh, based on Big Bang, uh, the radiation and matter, what does the thickness of that? It's singularity, it goes to zero. So that thickness is the same story, it goes to zero. However, it decreases. It is not absolute zero, zero. it goes to zero 
and it, it is decreasing. Don't think about that as the thickness of watermelon or something like that. <laughs> okay, uh, I just have a question about the time element. If the Big Bang or the Big Shock was the beginning of time, uh, and if we're not talking about a series one after the other of big bangs or big shocks, how could nothingness create this something of the big bang? I'm not sure you might have answered, but it was I didn't catch because if we're assuming there was no predetermined or uh, pre-existing elements to cause the big bang, then we have it seems to me a nothingness, uh, and it's out of time. Now how? Does something that's nothing come become something? It, it is the T consciousness. So T consciousness is neither matter nor energy, and it caused that explosion in the time to initiate the first or the nth uh, universe. All right, thank so, you. So, so it's we... based on the T consciousness. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. And I will note there is a, a comment that the time for the presentations and that there is a link to the YouTube video. So you have more explanations online. Sure. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next.